Welcome everybody. So my name is Ali Enright and I am the um, topic coordinator for Psychology 1A, but then I'm also um, the first year coordinator. Like um, you'll experience a lot here at your time at Flinders, we often do an acknowledgement of country where that I um, identify that I am welcoming you from the land of the Ghana people and pay my respect to elders past, present and emerging. And that's a really important part of each of our sessions here. So you'll hear that a lot, that acknowledgement of country. This is the Psychology Undergrad Information Session. We are so, so very excited to have you here with us. And like I said, I'm your first year coordinator. And what that means is that I am very passionate about student success and making sure that you feel supported um, in your time here at Flinders. So we know from the, the evidence that transitioning into university, regardless of where you're transitioning from, so a lot of you will be what we call school leavers, you're coming out of high school, but there are significant other groups that also join us for the first time, people who have had previous careers, or maybe people who had um, been in other roles, caring roles, and coming back to study um, and my job is to support that transition from whatever you were doing before into your studies but then also across all of your studies and ultimately into employment. So that means that I am super passionate about the steps that we take to support you in doing that. I also topic coordinate psychology 1A and 1B, and those are the core psychology topics in first year. So the vast majority of you are probably enrolled in psych 1A for semester one. It's also possible that some of you enrolled and took psych 1A in the summer, and you're gonna be taking maybe psych 1106, which is research methods in semester one, and then maybe psychology 1B in semester two. Um, there's a there's a few different pathways of how you could be doing first year in undergrad. So don't fret if you kind of feel like, hmm, she's not really talking about my pathway. There's lots of reasons why you might be here in this session and taking psychology 1A or any of our core topics this semester. Our teaching program director is someone that's probably useful to know. His name is Glenn Bodner. Um, he's a fellow Canuck like myself, so I'm a Canadian. Um, I've been living in Australia for 12 years and I absolutely love it here. Um, but uh, Glenn is, uh, has been here for a few years himself as well. And the teaching program director really oversees all of the issues to do with students or all of the teaching and learning components for all of our students in psychology. And whenever I say psychology, something else that I really want you to understand is that that means you might be a Bachelor of Psychological Science student, but it also means you could be a Bachelor of Behavioral Science student. So a lot of the time we have students who go, well, I'm, I'm actually a, a Bachelor of Behavioral Science student. Oh, well, um, I'm actually a Bachelor of Psychological Science or Psychology. And you guys, what's really important to know is that you are still each other's people because when it comes to studying psychology, we only have one set of psychology topics. So the Bachelor of Behavioral Science students and the Bachelor of Psychological Science or Psychology, or maybe you're even a BA Arts with a major in psychology, Psychology. If you're taking Psych 1A and Psych 1B and you plan on continuing to study psychology in the future, you have met your people regardless of kind of the degree or course pathway that you're taking. I'm just going to escape from here just so that I can double check if there's any questions. No, we're doing okay. Lovely. Ah, uh, both required psych textbook for the textbook page. We'll get into textbook um, questions Paris in a little bit, but if I don't come back to it, please remind me, okay? Lovely. All right. What I want to do, because we're using Collaborate now, and for many of you, this will be kind of the first time that you're using Collaborate. So the first thing I want to do is actually go through the basics of the software that we're using to meet. And that's really important because moving forward, you are pretty much always going to have the option of doing some bits of your participation via Collaborate. That is, since COVID-19 hit us back in 2020, we had to, as an institution and as a sector, as universities in a sector, we had to move quickly to accommodate online learning. And the way that we do that at Flinders is through the program called Collaborate, what we're meeting on right now.
So it's important and it's worth your time and it, and also it'll facilitate your topic coordinators. Those are the people who are responsible for teaching you in your topics, who manage the topic. It'll make their job of teaching and facilitating your learning easier if you know how to use this program really well. So let's look at the chat panel. So I'm going to stop sharing this. I'm going to actually come back and I'm going to, um, you guys can see this, my screen in front of me, right? So you guys can see if I close that and close this, I'll do, I'll be a little bit cheeky. I'll minimize this and I'm going to show you guys a, a picture of my daughter. So that's my little girl, Felix. I've got three little girls um, and she's off at school at the moment. But anyhow, that's just a little bit fun. Okay, let's bring up our collaborate. Now look, in your share, what you guys see on your screen right now looks a little bit like Inception, but it's actually the bit of the screen that I want you to see because this is what I'm gonna do right now is kind of teach you about how to use the collaborate. So everyone should see on their collaborate in front of them, down here, this little kind of picture of a person. And if you put your cursor over top of it, it, a little arrow pops up and it says my status and settings. Go ahead and click that. And what I want you to see here is an immediate feedback function. When teachers teach in a face-to-face -face way, a lot of what we use is your feedback that's nonverbal. We look for head nods. Awesome. I love that someone's already play around with it. Give me some happy faces, some sad faces, confused. When we teach, we're often teaching to head bobs. We can see that people are paying attention or we're teaching to slightly kind of confused looks on people's faces and we're not really sure what, what they're saying. And that kind of gives us some immediate feedback on are my students following? Do they understand? Here in Collaborate, this is how you can give your um, topic coordinators or your presenters immediate feedback. Awesome. I love it. I love that you guys are playing around with it. Um, and so what I often will do in my teaching is I'll say to my students, um, okay, I'm going to teach you this one thing. And then I want you to tell me, like, does that make sense? Do you give it, you know, give me a happy face if it makes sense. Give me a confused face if it doesn't make sense. And so you guys can know you come into here and you can give us some immediate feedback. Okay. Um, the other thing is that um, the chat panel, that's this per bit over here on the right. This is where you get to ask questions. Now, your topic coordinators will inevitably establish various cultures. So if I'm saying to you that, look, I wanna teach you about the basics of Collaborate and I wanna teach you about you know, the do's and the don'ts on the chat panel, there's obviously some basic ones. So the basic you know, do's and don'ts, we have to be respectful. So when you're chatting on the chat panel, you need to make sure that you're using language that's you know respectful to all of your peers and kind and so flinders actually has a netiquette policy and you can find that on your flow topics underneath of the general discussion forum so in the communication hub we have a link to the netiquette um, so it gives you just a bit of an idea around you know what's appropriate to say and what's inappropriate to say and those kinds of things most of you guys know that right you guys have you, you're adults you understand so i'm just reminding you that you need to be appropriate in the chat panel one of the ways that we can establish culture in the chat panel is um for example in psych 1a i usually tell my students okay the chat panel is essentially the same function as raising your hand and asking a question when I teach, I keep my eye on the chat panel. If a student has a question, I like to address it immediately as I'm going. What that means is it's not a chat panel that's constantly showing discussion. Because if you were imagine, let's imagine that you were actually in a face to face in a lecture theater and there was someone at the front of the room delivering a lecture or a workshop, you wouldn't be sitting there with your friends just having a conversation. It would appear quite rude to the presenter who's speaking. Instead, what I like to do is use the chat panel where if you want to ask a question, please definitely do. And if you're a student who feels as though you have the answer to that question, definitely respond. There's a lot of evidence in the literature that tells us that practicing our own interpretation of the answer or the information that someone's requesting can really work to solidify that information in our own knowledge and so making it more easy to recall when we need to. So I'm always encouraging students to answer each other's questions and also to know that I'm looking. 
And so if you happen to respond to someone and you give um, inaccurate information or misinformation, don't worry, because I can jump in there and say, oh, yep, that part's really accurate. Here's, you know, something about this part that might be useful as well. Some other topic coordinators, however, treat their chat panel really differently. For example, Nathan Weber in first year research methods, I know that he treats his chat panel differently. And so he'll teach you in the very first collaborate session for research methods one, how he expects you to operate the chat panel. So just be mindful that different topic coordinators, different teachers, different presenters will have different ways of running their chat panel. And so it's important that you kind of Think about the culture that that topic has established. For us and for the rest of this Collaborate session, let's follow what I said before, where if you have a question, please feel free to chuck it in the chat panel. If you reckon you know the answer to that um, question, please feel free to have a go and answer. What else did I say that we needed to have a look at? Um, that we've done the immediate feedback to the presenter. Accessing recordings. Okay, so accessing recordings is really um, straightforward. Essentially, um, I'm going to come back now. You're, I'm not going to actually see the chat panel because I'm going to go to a different spot in the screen. Um, but when you um, start looking at collaborate sessions, you guys can see I've moved my cursor up here and it's popped down this little menu. And this little menu then has lots of different collaborate sessions all through it. Now, none of those are suitable for you guys, but when you join collaborate in your own topics, um, you're going to have the opportunity to see, you're going to join the Collaborate session through that Collaborate menu that I just gave you. It's in that Collaborate menu that you can go up to the top left corner, click on the three lines, and it acts, and then one of them says Recordings, and then you can go and access the recordings that way. In Psychology 1A, immediately below the Collaborate link where I ask you guys to join via Collaborate for those people who want to join via Collaborate, I give you just a one page Word doc on how to access the recordings and I use screenshots and I use big red circles on where I want you to click um, from those screenshots. So I make it in a really easy way to do. So they're, they're easy to access. And for the most part, Collaborate recordings only live in Collaborate for about two weeks. Now in Psych 1A, I will always give you a recording in, in our flow site. So you don't need to worry about making sure that you get onto Collaborate and get the recording before the two weeks expires. But I think that's kind of useful information because if you're in other topics, those topic coordinators might not do that. And so it's important that you realize that if you want to have access to the recordings, you might have to go in and download that recording before two weeks past when the recording goes live. The recording goes live pretty much as soon as I stop the recording button. Okay, let's come out and let's just have a quick, are there any questions around collaborate or how you can use it? Usually what people do is I'll show you, Usually people share, um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna share some files and I'm gonna add my undergrad and I can pop them in here and show you. They're just converting the files. So usually people share their slides, not how I'm doing it by sharing the screen, although lots of people like to do it that way. Um, but the annoying part is that I can't see my chat panel when I'm presenting here and there's only a few places on campus where you sort of can. Um, but so most people actually share the slides in Collaborate and in Psychology 1A when I teach you in our Collaborate session, that's exactly how I'm going to do it. And so it looks a little bit like this. Okay, so here you can see I'm actually sharing the slides in Collaborate and you can participate along by looking at the slides that way. So why don't we do this all the time? What's the point in sharing the screen? Well, unfortunately, when I share the slides this way, sometimes it can distort the way the slides look. Luckily for us right now, it's not distorting them at all. They look perfect, um, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't tend to enable any of the media. So if I have little videos that I want you to watch, um, it won't usually work very well. You usually have to share your screen. Um, but for now, this is actually working really well. So let's just keep going with it while it's doing that. Um, and then that way I can also monitor the chat panel and make sure that I'm answering your questions. Any questions on Collaborate or 
um, every flow topic, and I'll tell you what flow is in a minute, but everywhere that you go to access your learning online for any of the topics that you have here at Flinders, we'll have a collaborate link if you're expected to do or if it's an option to do any of your participation in collaborate. And like I said, the vast majority of topics now actually have at least one option for collaborate so the students can participate online. But I'm going to stop talking and you guys tell me any questions around collaborate, you can pop it in the chat panel and I can address it. Okay, if something comes up as we're going, please feel free to interrupt me. I always welcome the interruptions. Okay, this is your Okta. So um, maybe just give me a quick, let's test our immediate feedback now that you guys know how to give immediate feedback. Um, and um, why don't you guys give me a bit of a smiley face if you've had a quick look at Okta. So any smiley faces, that's it. I see them coming now, brilliant. So quite a few people then have managed to get on to their Okta. So essentially, Okta is this place that houses all of your apps. And most of us nowadays are at least somewhat familiar with the concept of an app. Um, but Flow is the one that I want to um, spend a little bit of time on, and that's because it's called Flinders Learning Online. That's where you're going to access all of your topic information, um, each topic, regardless of what college that topic belongs to um, has a flow page or flow site. And so we'll go through flow a little bit more carefully. But there are other really useful apps on Okta that I wanted to draw your attention to. One of them is Office 365. That means that you can access Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And these are really useful, particularly if you're a student who's arrived and you don't have uh, Word or Excel or PowerPoint already installed on your computer. It means that all you have to do is log into your um, log into your uh, Okta dashboard, and then you can find your uh, Office 365 app in the Okta dashboard. If you don't see it there, um, on this on this slide here, I've given you a um, little hint um, how to add apps. So on the home page, you can go to click this add apps button and you can type in this search bar here, maybe Office 365. You should see it, but if you don't, just click it there and then you can just click this add button. So there's often, um, and you can go looking, what apps are there, what's available? And this is useful because as you access these apps, Okta will naturally start pre-selecting the apps that you visit most frequently and put them at the top of your Okta dashboard. So for me, for example, I log into Okta and Flow is almost always the very first app that rocks up because I'm constantly going on Flow and checking in on my teaching and learning and my students. Another one that's worthwhile, so there's Office 365, that's really useful. Um, Outlook for your email, and this is also useful because now that you're a Flinders student, you of course have a Flinders email. And this is really important that you check your Flinders email um, regularly, so every day. Um, I, when I was a student, and even in the first few years as a staff member, actually got my Flinders email address forwarded to my Gmail um, because I was in the habit of checking Gmail really regularly. So if that's an option that suits for you, go for it. Point being is that we as topic coordinators, as the people who really care about your success and, and helping you um, through your, your topics, will communicate with you on Flow and through your email, your Flinders email address. So make sure you, you check those regularly. Next is the Career Hub, and I think that's a really useful app because like I said, I'm passionate about your success while you're here, but ultimately that doesn't stop until we get you to your employment. That means that we care about transitioning you all the way to employment. We want to see you successful in whatever career you choose and whatever career destination that is. And the Career Hub begins that support structure of helping to teach you about what kind of career and employability skills you can learn along the way. And one of the other things that I do in this role 
and that I support our other teachers to do in our college and, and more broadly across the university is to weave that employability through the curriculum. So when you learn about psychology 1A and we start going through social psychology, developmental psychology, physiological psychology, and all the different key content areas, we're also going to talk about how do you apply this in your career or what? how can you start thinking about the tasks or actions that you need to do now that help to prepare you for the career that you want. Uh, okay, Brett, and that brings up a really good point. So Brett's question is that um, he has a problem with his emails. It brings up his previous TAFE email when I try to connect, and that sounds really annoying. But it's a, a nice opportunity for me to then explain that we do have a um, two sources of sort of tech support for students when these kinds of annoying things pop up. So if your flow doesn't work the way that I'm saying it should and or the way that you would expect it to, there's a link on our Psychology 1A flow site. So it's Psych 1101 is the, the you know, sort of tech uh, way of saying Psychology 1A. If you go to that flow site, you'll see that I put a link right near the top of the flow site in the general section called the Flinders Flow Student Help Desk. So if Flow's not working the way that you would expect it to, click that link, lodge your request with the problem, and they're actually fairly quick on how to um, support you. The Flow desk, they get that students are like, ah, my Flow's not working, please help me. Um, so they're usually really responsive and really quick. Um, the other way that you can do things is by sending an email to askflinders at flinders.edu.a. I'll just type that in here, ask, whoops, Flinders at flinders.edu.au. That's a really important email to have um, because that handles all student requests. So if your email isn't working the way that you want, send an email to ask Flinders and say, hey, my email keeps bringing up tape. Can you please advise me how to fix this problem? And then again, they're really responsive. They understand that particularly around this point in the year when students are getting ready and organized um, and they'll be there to help you. If either of those two options fail and you're not sure what to do, email me or post it up on the discussion forum on Flow. Okay, so that's a, um, our basics of Okta. Make sure that you log into Okta every day, check your emails every day, and check your Flow site every day. So, Flow. All right, now I know that I'm going through all this content quickly. Please interrupt me with your questions. Um, put them on the flow on the chat panel and also know that I'm I'm at your service, right? Like that's part of my job here as my first year coordinator. I really care about facilitating your learning. So know that um, from now you actually have access to our Psych 1A flow site. And I'll just quickly jump into our flow site so that you can see what it looks like. Um, if you haven't visited it already this morning. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to stop sharing these slides. I'm going to share my screen again so that you can um, see what I'm doing. All right, cool. Here we go. I'll come to our flow site. I will come to our semester one flow site. And I'm just going to come down to the student view. So you guys had a quick sneaky peek at what it looks like to me. This is what it should look like to you. Okay, so this is our psychology psych 1101, semester one. Now don't worry about all of this. All it means is that I'm actually, um, some of you are enrolled in the online version and some of you are enrolled in sort of the face-to-face -face version. You all have the exact same flow site. So it's all it's doing is saying that we're capturing everyone with this one flow site. Now, look, I know some of you um, will be learning face to face with me in the classroom, and I know others will prefer to remain learning through Collaborate. All of you, regardless of whether you're learning face to face or online, need to complete this student COVID-19 declaration. It is a very quick and easy um, declaration. You essentially click this link. It'll bring you to, um, uh, I, it's saying reattempt quiz here because I've already done it, um, but you essentially just read some information and then the quiz is just two questions and it's essentially acknowledging that you're going to wear masks and that you're going to socially distance. And the social distance aspect, we make sure that when we invite you to come to campus to learn, that the space in which we're inviting you in is accommodating social distancing. 
but you have to complete this declaration before you get access to this missing module here. See how here it says topic information and resources, and then it comes to the communication hub. You're actually missing the assessment hub, and the assessment hub is what gives you all of your key assessment information. If I come back to my normal role, um, perfect. In here, that's where I can show you that there's an assessment hub here. Oops, sorry, it's on the other side next to the communication hub. This is where you get all of the important assessment information um, for our topic. So it's important that you complete this declaration in order to get access to the assessment hub. Now, that's going to be true for all of the topics that you take. So it's even if you're an online only student and you won't be learning face to face, our central executive team has decided to take the approach that all students have to um, de um, declare that they understand that if they come to campus um, that they need to wear masks and bring their own masks and essentially adhere to the other SA health um, requirements. So on our flow site right now, this here we see is a, the general section. That's going to be the same for all of your other flow sites. This is the general section here. I'm just going to quickly come back over here and make sure I thought I saw a question. Um, no, okay, cool. Um, we'll come back here. Okay, so this is a general section on flow. First thing I want to draw your attention to after the declaration is the announcements. This is, if you click on here, this is where uh, you'll see I've got lots and I will throughout the whole semester give you announcements about important things that are happening around you. So it could be about um, some uh, assessment components. I often like to remind students that assessments are coming. So I'll send you an announcement saying like, hey, remember, we've got an assessment that's due um, very soon. Um, but these uh, announcements always get sent to your Flinders email address as well. So when you get emails from me, it's likely from an announcement. Um, but here's an, uh, a good, it's good to know that we house all of those. So if you lose one of my emails, you don't have to panic. Just come, click on the announcements, and that's all you'll find it. Here's that flow support link that I said existed. Here's our Collaborate link. So if ever you want to join via Collaborate, so for those of you who are enrolled in the online version of the topic, you click that link and that's how you join our sessions. Um, I've also given you some basic Collaborate instructions and then how to access those recordings. And then finally, um, some Collaborate student help as well in case you need if Collaborate's not working the way that you um, expect it to. Next, we've got our welcome video. So that's where I welcome you to Psych 1A. So it's definitely worth a watch. I do that from the law courtyard this year. Um, I often like to showcase different places and spaces on campus that I think would be really uh, useful for students. Now, when I was showing you the assessment hub before, um, you guys saw there was heaps more of what we call modules. Each of these boxes is called a module. I will um, very carefully and slowly chunk information as I present it to you. So you won't see all the modules um, right away because that's often really overwhelming for students. And so I usually like to um, kind of, I'll open a module one week at a time. So for example, this week, you'll see those modules that I showed you before, but then also you'll see, um, the like writing resources module but for our content like the key content that you have to learn i've only showed you week one what is psychology week one next week or after the end of week one i'll open up or towards halfway through week one i'll open up week two so that we're going to kind of chunk the information as we go and we do that specifically because of what the evidence tells us in cognitive psychology so what we know from cognitive psychology is that chunking information and the way that we chunk information is really important for how you learn. And so remember, of course, all of us here are really geared to facilitating your learning and making sure that we support the best learning that we can for you. So we'll move through the topic that way. Um, how do we register for a specific stream for on campus in Psych 101? Okay, so that's a good question, Caitlin. And the, the short answer is at the moment, all the face-to-face -face streams are full. And so because we're in a COVID-19 uh, sensitive time, 
I actually have to stick very, very closely to that enrollment. It means that when we get to our class, so that's face to face, I have to take attendance. And all of these steps that we have to go through are important should we get a positive case in class and we have to go through the rigmarole of reporting that positive case and alerting everyone and the like. So at this point in time, unfortunately, I'm unable to invite anyone to come to our face to face class unless you're already enrolled in a face-to-face -face stream. But sometimes within the first two to three weeks um, of the topic starting, people drop out because they might decide, oh, you know what, my load is a little bit um, high this year. I think I'd like to go ahead and study Psych 1A in the summer or next year, or maybe Psych isn't exactly what I thought it was gonna be and I'm gonna switch degrees altogether. So if um, if you're really keen to come face to face, my best, and you can't get into a 1101 stream, my best advice would be to send an email to that askflinders at flinders.edu.au email address and do that maybe around week three because that's when we're likely to have just a few people kind of maybe rearrange their time a bit and that's when you can ask them for the enrollment support to then um, to then get into one of the streams one through four okay so back to flow and why it is very useful for you so we have three key um, modules in flow and that's the topic information and resources the communication hub and the assessment hub um, uh, thanks um, for that feedback about the declaration I will take that down because I've only tried it on my end and I'm not actually had any students try it um, so that's important because um, I and same for you Harry okay good to know guys um, this is important feedback and I'm glad that we're doing this now in a week. Um, these are, this is a brand new declaration that's been put out centrally by the university. So, um, uh, uh, but it's working, it's working for some of you, but not for, for all of you. Um, so that's really important because I think we'll go in and I can give that feedback. For the people that it's not working for, one bit that I probably should have mentioned before is that sometimes when you do the declaration and submit it, it takes a little bit of time for Flow to update and then show that assessment hub module. So you might need to give it half a day even at times for that restriction to register on flow so if you um if you mean that you've done the declaration but you're still not seeing your assessment hub give it a bit of time if you still don't see it by the end of the day then i'd send an email to that ask flinders um i think i saw i thought i saw another about a mature age student no it's not showing up okay cool um, that's really bizarre because I can see there are three new messages. Okay, well, maybe it'll pop up on my chat panel in a minute. Okay, so um, the topic information and resources, this is really important. And I'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen again so that you can have a quick look at what that is. Okay, so coming back here. Um, Gonna, so this is um, how it looks to me because you can see that assessment or maybe, yeah, no, I'm in student view, so great, it's actually registered. Um, so topic information and resources. This module teaches you all about your participation expectations in flow. So the way that Psych 1A works is that we have some sections each week of our flow sites that I expect you to do at home before you come to the workshop. So we have these key sections, reflecting on the big picture, learning the core content, applying my learning, extending myself further. Those sections are present in every one of our weekly modules. And for example, reflecting the big picture and the learning the core content, those two sections of our flows uh, of our module, our weekly modules, you complete those at home before your workshop. OK, then the applying my learning section, that's essentially what we're doing in the workshop. We're taking everything that you've learned in the core content and we're applying it to real world problems. That's what we do in the first half. That's where you get to really know the value of why we bothered to teach you that core content. Why is it useful? How do we apply it? 
In the second half of our weekly workshops, I give you the opportunity to develop and practice the skills that you need for your assessments. So I often have slides, PowerPoints, presentations, and we go through assessment information. We go through exactly how you complete your assessments and the like. Here you can find an obvious, you know, where the workshops are and their locations. Textbook, now Paris, I told you I would come back to your question about readings. Um, look, people have, uh, every weekly module we put in the readings that go with the textbook. I strongly recommend getting the textbook. I think it's worthwhile. You can get the online version. I have a copy of it on my phone. I know a lot of people prefer the hard copy and that's okay too. Um, I recommend it because if you're planning to study psychology over the next few years, it's useful. Sometimes you might hear about something in a second year topic or even a third year topic and you're like, hang on, I've never really heard of that. I don't really understand it. Um, and then you can go back to your psych textbook and, and refresh yourself or get basic, the basics on that topic area. Um, can you be successful in this topic without the textbook? Definitely, of course. So you can use that bit of information as well. Um, the textbook aligns with my slides. So when I give you images in my learning the core content section, and when I'm giving you those short videos using those, those PowerPoints, the images that I use, I often take from the textbook so that people who are going through the textbook, there's a nice coherency, a nice kind of common narrative between the textbook and what I'm teaching you. Now, Paris, I understand that your question specifically was around, um, uh both textbooks that's right um ah the ice do you mean the link the icbn for both of them so you're trying to buy it online and it doesn't work when you paste it into booktopia hmm okay uh yes okay i'll make a note of that too um booktopia does have you tried just clicking the link that i provide you in the readings because that might be the easier way to go or to actually just put the um, the textbook title into it. Uh, OK, so Paris, that's probably the best solution here is just um, in here in site on our flow site. When you come down to the readings bit here, I give you a link textbook direct online purchase um, and I give you that one. Um, the link goes straight to like a package deal for the textbook and this other book. I'll just grab it. Um, this is the other book, and this is a guide, a writing guide. It is so incredibly useful. Past students that I've taught in first year still rely on this in third and even fourth year. It teaches you about all APA, about how to format your essays, your research reports. Um, it gives you examples of good essays, bad essays. So I think it's a really useful resource and that's the link to grab them. Um, my pleasure. Um, the online of the version, Jack, you can get it from that link that I, um, that I just showed you as well. Uh, updated ISBN for, what is the updated ISBN for the textbooks? Um, uh, yeah, but we've been through that one. Cool, all right, let's come back here. This is our topic handbook. Please, please read it. Almost all of students' questions that I get in the first two weeks can be answered through the topic handbook. Um, you got to keep in mind that in psych, uh, in first year psychology and psych 1A uh, specifically, we sometimes get in the neighborhood of six to seven, even last year, 800 students. So there's quite, quite a large student body here. And so to help kind of go through those emails, because when you all reach out to me, of course I respond, um, but most of the time, if it's a question that I know is answered in the topic handbook, I might just be really brief and say, g'day um, and pleasure to meet you, but then advise that you just consult the topic handbook. So that's that's a really good resource to check out and read. It's got links in it um, that are useful and it takes you through just a lot of information around the topic, how we deliver it, um, the assessment information, um, support services and the like. So that's the topic information and resources module. Just quickly check to see if there's other questions and I can't see any yet. Um, next one is the communication hub. Along the same line with kind of trying to manage student asking questions and emails and that sort of thing, 
If you have a question about the topic or assessments or anything, um, really, you can please post it in the general discussion forum. So you just click on the link, add a new discussion topic here and ask your question. I promise you that if, you're, if you have that question, there's undoubtedly additional people with the same question. And this goes back to what I was saying at the very beginning of the session that, you know, um, that test out your answers. So if someone asks a question and you think that you've got the right answer, go for it. Even if you're wrong, it doesn't matter. We're at university. This is the place to learn. This is the place to um, engage in that kind of behavior. So don't worry if you're wrong. I promise you I'll be wrong a few times, if not more, in our, in our time together. Um, and that's okay. That's how you learn. Um, I'm an absolute gung-ho fan of learning. I was the biggest nerd growing up, and I still am. Um, so test out your info. All right. Lastly, we have this assessment resources module. Now this one um, you'll have access to after you complete that declaration. And for those of you who are struggling with that declaration and accessing the assessment hub, my best advice is keep trying to go through it. And if it's not working, send an email out to ask Flinders and they'll respond swiftly, I'm sure of it. And I'll chase that up with our deans of education as well and just give them that feedback that some students are struggling um, with the link. Um, and I think that's really important feedback because I'm not sure that the declaration is the absolute best way to move forward. Anyhow, moving on, we've got um, assessment. Oh, this is the assessment resources. This isn't the assessment hub. So I can't, I'll have to jump out to show you the assessment hub. So return to my normal view. Okay, assessment hub, here we go. So there's a lot of stuff that isn't gonna look the same for you because I'm showing it in my other view. But what I wanted to really show you was that we break the assessments up according to all the tasks that you have to do. So in Psych 1A, you have four tasks, participation. Then you have the case study. Then you have the literature review. And then you have these summative quizzes. Everything and anything that you need to do for assessment will be in the assessment hub. A key part of the assessment hub is also the statement of assessment methods. So make sure that's where you click a, a link. The link is in that assessment hub. And that tells you exactly what assessments you have to do for every topic. All right, I'm going to come back to my PowerPoint here and we'll keep moving. Cool. So everything that you have to do with an assessment will be in that assessment hub module. So your statement of assessment method, that gives you a link and it tells you exactly the assessments that you have. Um, if you have to submit an essay or a literature review, if you have to submit any piece of work, there's a submission portal. And I promise you, I go through all of this in much finer, slower detail in Psych 1A. We have a whole workshop that's just about me teaching you how to submit your assessments and that sort of thing. So don't panic if I've kind of breezed through it quickly this morning. The point is to that we'll get to it again in Psych 1A. I just wanted to draw your attention to those first three key modules, Topic Information Resources, Communication Hub, and Assessment Hub. Okay, Psychology 1A, I've already told you how the topic works, where you do some of the learning at home, and then you come to the workshop where we're going to spend the first hour doing sort of applying that to real world problems, what you just learned, and then the second half of the hour is developing the skills for assessment. Can you join the Collaborate workshop even though you're enrolled in a face-to-face -face session? Absolutely, totally fine. You can do that and that's no problem. Anyone and everyone is welcome to join the Collaborate session. Are the workshops recorded? Yep, and I've given you all that information of how you can access that, uh, those recordings. But again, I'll go through that again in Psych 1A just to be sure. This is the next kind of really important bit about orientation. And this is about, okay, even if we have all of that information on how to access the assessments and the topic information and all that, what about, what are the things that I need to be doing to be successful while I'm here at university and at Flinders? Importantly, I'm gonna draw your attention to Lizio's five senses of student success. Essentially, there's a sense of connectedness, a sense of capability, 
a sense of purpose and a sense of resourcefulness. This is what the evidence seems to tell us that here, if we can help our students develop these senses, they're far more likely to be successful in their time studying with us. So how do you do this? How do you develop your senses? If you want to develop your sense of connection, do you feel connected with the program of study, with the people around you? Here are some really specific tasks that you can do to encourage a sense of connection. So you can join a club or a society. Um, we have heaps of them. You can join the gym. So FUSA is our Flinders University Student Association. And FUSA can, um, if you go to the homepage there for FUSA, that's the one for clubs. But if you just go to um, FUSA's website, you'll actually see they have heaps of ways that you can engage with your, with your peers. Um, how do you cultivate student to student relationship with social distancing rules? I promise you it's possible. Good question, Seth, because right now I'm cultivating these relationships with you. I remember Paris, Oliver, Brett, I can see Brooke, and I know I can see your names there, but eventually as we continue to teach, you're gonna, and as we continue to learn together, I'm gonna see your names more and more. And what's always really exciting to me is when I actually get to meet you face to face, <laughs> it's like, oh, that's what you kind of look like. And um, you do this because we have this thing called breakout groups as well. And so I'm going to, at various times, put you into groups with each other in an online way and you're going to get to use your mics and your cameras and you're going to get to chat and you're going to get to see each other so there's definitely the way to still um, engage those relationships with your peers another key part of psych 1a is our mentoring program you'll have a third year mentor and even if you're online you don't have to meet your mentor in an online way it depends on your group and it depends on your mentor but most of the time they meet face to face that being said, please be um, reassured that, of course, we have lots of online opportunities for mentors. Um, so we can definitely accommodate people who would like to remain online. But point being is that you can use your camera, you can chat with each other. Um, but I think that's a really important question, Seth, because it's one that not just our students um, are faced with, it's one that our academics are faced with as well. How do we make sure that we develop or encourage students to develop that sense of connection? Okay, next one is purpose. This is where I find students, um, if you're anything like me when I went through my undergrad, it's kind of tricky. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was really just kind of listening to my gut and taking topics that I thought were sort of interesting to me. But developing a sense of purpose means that you can identify the stepping stones that you need to kind of go through to get to your end career. So um, this is where you can visit that career hub um, app that I talked to you about on your Acta, uh, Okta dashboard. You can go and actually book in times with career advisors and have a chat. Start thinking about, well, where do I want to take this degree? For some of you, you'll have a really clear sense of that. Now, someone's drawing on the whiteboard. Um, I didn't realize that was enabled. Usually I <laughs> disable that, but um, these sessions are set up more centrally for all of us. But if I could ask you to avoid drawing on the whiteboard, that would be really, really helpful. Thank you. Okay, next one, um, capabilities. So um, look, there's this thing called imposter syndrome where you sort of feel a little bit like, ooh, maybe everyone's going to figure out that I'm just not very good at this and I'm in this course and it's supposed to be a rigorous course and I'm not really sure. So self-doubt, self-criticism. Um, if you, you have some of these things, I think it's really important that we learn to start to challenge some of these perceptions. Um, so we'll actually go through some of this in Psych 1A when we start talking about motivation and emotion and some other social psychology concepts. But if these start to really wear you down, of course we have free and confidential counseling services. So you can go through to your student health and counseling, talk about how to develop a sense of capability or self-efficacy, believing that you possess the capacity to complete tasks. Um, you can come talk to me about additional feedback. I always, with every assessment, offer additional consultation hours where you can come in and have a chat and get some additional personalized um, sort of chat um, feedback rather than just written feedback. Um, and then, of course, you can think about, OK, maybe I've got some tasks about generally uh, completing university that would be better supported through the Student Learning Center. If you go to the level two of the central, the main library, level two, there's this place called 
called the comms. Their whole job there is to help support you with your learning um, and you can book in online or face to face and you can have one on one consultations. Um, you can do something called the Horizon Award where you develop professional skills and actually get a point based um, allocation depending on each one and work your way up through sort of silver, gold, platinum to develop a sense of capability. Resourcefulness is this is where you can start thinking about, you know, do I, how do I find the answers to the questions that I have? So know where to find help. Think about that. Ask Flinders if you're unsure. Any of the student help desks. Um, explore our flow site. Go to the Finding Your Way at Flinders Flow site. These are really useful places that help to give you the information on all the bits that you're after. So our flow site, bits of information around how to do Psych 1A, the assessment resources folder that I briefly opened gives you additional resources on completing our assessments. Um, networking skills, you can still do this in, in an online way. Um, get together, lots of students try to do um, Facebook groups or Discord um, is another app that students like to use. Check out our Flinders Psychology Student Association and we're gonna have the president, Mark, have a, a minute to have a uh, introduce him himself and talk about Flinders Psychology Student Association and that jumps into this idea of university culture. So take time to come to campus even if you're an online student if you feel like it there's lots of activities that are still happening here on campus. Visit that FUSA um, again check out the Career Hub and all those sorts of fun things. Okay, look, I was going to jump us into breakout groups. You did actually have that opportunity to chat with each other, but I've spent far too much time just babbling on and on and on about all the content that I wanted to get across to you today. So I think we'll skip this because we only sort of have eight minutes left and I really want to give people the opportunity to ask more questions and also for Mark to have a chat. This, um, this uh, set of PowerPoint slides is going to be available to you at the Finding Your Way at Flinders Flow site, so you will have access to them. One of them is the support um, services. It's really important that students are aware that we have oodles and oodles of support services. So go to um, our main Flinders website, click on students, and that'll take you to the Compass website. You can log in there, um, and it's a Compass is a website that was developed for students by students and it starts to populate you with all of the key information that you need like your flow, your uh, current GPA, um, your timetable actually pops up there as well and there's a link to all of the support services that are available and I'll come back to that at the end with Oasis. Oh, well, here we are with Oasis. Oasis is a fantastic place to go for student support. So it's all focused on student well-being. Um, they have heaps and heaps of different um, groups, uh, opportunities like the Flinders Community Market. Um, if you're a student and you're struggling to kind of buy some of the basic um, pantry items, we always have a Flinders Community Market where those items are really dis um, uh, cheap. I'm trying to, I couldn't remember the word, discounted, there we go. Um, and so, you know, there's yoga, there's, um, we're going to start doing gully walks and I'll actually take you into the gully in Psych 1B and we'll go for a walk. So um, please, please check out all the student services. Okay, next is our Flinders Psychology Student Association. So I'll invite Mark to pop on your camera and your mic and take it away. Thanks, Ali. Now I can see that my video is working, but uh, can you guys let me know if my audio is okay too? Sounds good. Cool. All good, mate. Sweet. Thanks, guys. Well, you've had lots of uh, handy information in this session. I wish I attended such an event when I started out. Um, yeah, so hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Flinders, or perhaps even welcome back to Flinders. My name is Mark Leatherby, and I am the president of the Flinders Psychology Students Association, uh, i.e. FUPSA. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment of your time to introduce FUPSA and pass on some information which you guys might find useful. So firstly, a bit about FUPSA. Uh, so FUPSA is an on-campus student association uh, ran by psychology students for psychology students. I do enjoy saying that. <laughs> uh, we offer an array of services which include uh, student representation, social events such as the pub crawl and the ball which we ran last year, which were uh, quite the success if I do say so myself. Uh, general study support and welfare support, uh, also organisation of educational and careers events along with many other professional uh, development opportunities. Uh, and lastly, merchandise such as the psychology hoodies, which you can see here uh, on this slide. Now, a word on first year representation. 
So of uh, particular importance for you guys is the representation we specifically offer for first year students. So we have dedicated first year representatives, uh, which will aim to support first year students in any way possible. And this includes um, uh, essentially liaising between the students and UPSA, and also working with faculty to enrich the first year experience. Uh, and here on the slide, we have the contact uh, detail for this. So that is fupsa.undergraduate at gmail.com. So as for how to get in touch with us, uh, to the right, you'll see our contact details. Uh, we are located in room SSN 101. Uh, you can find us using the Lost On Campus app if you are unsure where this is. Uh, and if you don't know what that app is, it's essentially an app which can help you find your way around Flinders and you can get that uh, off your relevant app store essentially. Now, our general email for all inquiries is ask.fulpser at gmail.com and our, our website is flinderspsychologystudents.com. Uh, below all this, uh, you'll see our social media details for our various platforms. Uh, please note that uh, Facebook is our primary platform. And furthermore, I wanted to point out that uh, the point out the Fulpser Social Discord, which is an online communication platform. Given the current climate, this is a great way to get in touch with fellow students and ask us any questions you might have. Uh, you can find us through the Flinders University Discord Hub. Uh, alternatively, there are direct links on all our pages. So if you head to our website or our Facebook page, you can find the link there. Uh, and finally, I wanted to let you know that we have made a first year survival guide, which has a large array of information which will be particularly important for first year students. And this will hopefully complement a lot of the information which Ali has given you today. And this can be found on our website blog page, which is uh, directly linked here on the slide uh, down the bottom right there. Uh, and that's pretty much that's that's it for me. Um, so I hope you everyone has a fantastic year, and I hope to see you around. Uh, and I'll now pass you back to Ali. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks, Good, Mike. Mate. That was brilliant. <laughs> Great work. Um, look, I strongly encourage you guys to get to know um, your Flinders Psychology Student Association reps and groups. And um, on that note, it's a good idea to also think about becoming a rep yourself. Um, so in um, of course, we have everything that Mark just talked about, but we also have the opportunity to be course reps. So this is where you get to come in and um, get to be part of some meetings within the discipline um, in our college. So if you're a course rep, um, we take up to three course reps for every course. So that can be for the Bachelor of Behavioral Science, that could be for the Bachelor of Psychological Science, the Honors Stream, there's quite a few courses um, actually within psychology. So I won't take the time to list them all now, but there is, um, you can go to fusa.edu.au slash SRO to um, apply. And I actually asked, um, and I think this went out through our operations email, every student in uh, SEPSWA or the College of Education, Psychology and uh, Social Work should have received an email from me about um, inviting you to consider becoming a course rep. Um, so it's it's a really um, it's a really great opportunity, and of course it looks fantastic on your CV. Um, look, lastly, I just wanted to point out that despite us doing this online and the vast majority of things still being online, there are nonetheless some fun and exciting things happening on campus. I think, as Seth pointed out, there's a lot of value to uh, coming and developing connections with students and your peers um, and staff on campus as well, if that's an option for you. Um, remember to bring your mask um, and to, of course, engage in social distancing. But there are all of these sessions that you see on the campus. I went down this morning um, near our student hub, which is where I grab my morning coffee every morning. And there was heaps of gorgeous tables and um, carpets and pillows and um, live music going to be coming as well. So um, this is happening all week. Lastly, I know that this session is like drinking through a fire hose, right? Like that, that was just like a blast of information and I really worked quickly <laughs> to get it across. We understand that it's a lot of info. Please know that I will go through so much of this again in the first few weeks of Psychology 1A. So if anything was just like, whoa, I didn't catch that. Don't worry, we will be going through it again. Secondly, that we appreciate that O week and orientation is, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like really a lot of information from everywhere at once. So to facilitate kind of support, um, keep in mind that we've got, this is O week, but then 
We've got three more weeks of orientation and events, and I will continue to put that information up on our Psych 1A flow site so that you can know what's available to you, what um, events are happening uh, that you might find interesting or worthwhile. All right, now I'll just kick about for a couple minutes to ask questions, um, and then I've got to head off to another meeting. But are there any questions that you guys want to ask? Feel free to pop it in the chat panel. Really? Come on, surely there's a question. No, we're just looking forward to seeing you next week. I'm so looking forward to seeing you guys too. It's been a whole summer of not teaching because I've had people teaching the summer topics and I miss you guys. I miss being with the students. So I'm really excited to see you guys too. Um, the campus tours um, are not specific to psychology. That's mostly because really in psych, we kind of go all over. Um, so we don't actually have psychology specific tours, but we have tours and you can ask people about, you know, where do psych topics usually run? They're usually out of social sciences north, social sciences south, law, <laughs> they work quite a, the humanities. We even go down to Flinders Medical Center every now and again. So um if psych 1101 is not on your timetable then i would definitely send an email to ask flinders immediately and just say i'm meant to be enrolled but i can't see it anywhere um and then they should ask you if you can access our flow site but it's not showing up on your uh timetable that's another good one to send to ask flinders and just ask them why there's that discrepancy um you're welcome michelle could you please go through again how to access the recordings after a live stream i won't jack only because i have that handout right there go to our flow site open up that um, word doc and you it'll it'll step you through it really carefully um how do you join the psychology association club charlotte um mark that might be a good question for you hello again um so we do there is currently a link for this on our facebook page it, there was a deadline on it, which I think was early January, but um, don't worry too much about that. We are always looking for new members. So if you navigate to our Facebook page, I think it should be one of the most recent posts. Cool. Thanks, Mark. 